size and scale were very important to me in graduate school. Um, and they still are very important to me. But the scale I have in my home studio are much smaller um, than what I'm able to, what, what I was able to create in that environment. So what's been really cool now is I've had to make steps of figuring out different problems and problem solving space issues and still being able to create work that I think is impactful. And not necessarily small by any means, but that fits in a space and can still envelop um, a room. So that's been the interesting challenge <laughs> when you leave a graduate program. The studio space leaves. But this is one of the first pieces I did outside of graduate school. I primarily was painting myself, my body. And this is a self-portrait. Um, and this is at a scale of, you know, 24 by 36. And a lot of the pieces I was doing around this time, maybe three months after I graduated, were in this scale. A couple other ones. Some of these paintings have found new homes at, at this point. I don't have them all in my studio anymore, but um, they're really fun practices of how I could navigate these tighter confined spaces. I'm kind of using up the canvas more um, and kind of creating these smaller vignettes, which was a fun little exploration. And then soon after that, I started to have a drive for wanting to incorporate new people. And by that, I mean, I want to paint friends and family and different people that I thought that I think are so important to me. And this is one of my best friends, Sarah. And I want to think about bodies that weren't just my own. Having a fat white frame has been something that's impacted my work my entire life. Um, and was a huge part of my graduate studies thesis and big part of who I am still. But I want to explore identities outside of my own and see how I would feel digging into the other parts of feminism and thinking about an intersectional approach of how I work with people, take photographs, and really get to work with each woman that I've been able to um, document. And not primarily, right now it's only been women and um, women identifying folk, but I am really excited to hopefully work with other different, different people. Close up in detail of this piece. Um, this is a, a friend and colleague of mine. She's a <laughs> art therapist named Cassie. She's wonderful. Um, but all the people that I've painted in the past year have been people that I deeply respect, um, people that were interested in being part of this project. And these works, these vignettes of these different women and their bodies and sharing a bit of themselves with me was all part of the Ourselves exhibition I had in Albert Lee, Minnesota um, in this past year. It was a really beautiful combination of just gathering these women all in one space and creating an exhibition that really felt like it, a celebration of each individual person and their personal power and how their bodies are so different, but carry just so much passion and strength and really allowing the natural body and the power of that to envelop a space. And a lot of these pieces, this one of Diva Rose is one of my favorites. Um, this is a five by six foot piece that I painted inside my apartment. <laughs> and in my home studio. So I'm still able to really push my scale and create a really impactful piece. This is Jane. Um, some of the women I've worked with haven't wanted to incorporate their full face. So I've had to work in the scope of painting whatever they were comfortable with. And Jane was willing for me to use her name, but wanted me to not incorporate past her dimples. And for anybody that knows her, and she's a big part of my life, she's very identifiable, but um, I want to respect any anonymity that any of my models wanted to take. That was a really big part of the project as well. It was a constant conversation of, I'm so excited that you're a part of this, but what are you comfortable with? What are the things that you want to step away from um, and not, not share completely? Not everybody's fully comfortable like I am to like put their bodies all the way, all the way out there and I know Claire is in that same boat of self-portraiture but um, this has been a really beautiful and powerful exploration for a lot of these women and 
allowing themselves to open up even a few steps. Everybody's in a different place in their emotional journey with their bodies. And I love being a part of that for some of these people. Um, this is Heather. And Heather is actually alumnus of <laughs> the MFA program as well. And we were friends in the program. And um, she's also a painter. Um, this is Susie. This is actually my mother, who, again, didn't want her face incorporated. But she was really excited and supportive about being a part of this project and um, was able to share this with me and no questions asked, trusted me to, to paint this for her. And it's truly one of my favorite pieces I think I've ever done. But I think that's what it means to paint other people. I think you can step outside of yourself and have a moving experience outside of your body. And I've really found that after leaving the MFA program. I still love painting my body and painting myself, and that's something I want to keep exploring, especially in this time of quarantine. I have some new work I'm exploring, but this has been a really beautiful exploration post-grad and seeing how I can express myself beyond myself. Um, and getting into, sorry, <laughs> this is Susie, um, what's been happening during this big change during COVID-19, I've been working on commissions. So the next few pieces are commission work. Um, they're a little bit different than what I would normally be working on. A lot of times they're much smaller scale, so the way I have to paint them is very different. Um, and the time is a little bit different. But it's been a way that I think a lot of us as artists have, are trying to try this out and do more commissions. So this is woman named Stephanie, who wanted a piece that was very similar to anything I usually create, but this is much smaller than what I normal, normally create. But it's been really exciting to make something that someone is excited about and send it off. This really abstract piece, um, it's the form similar to my body. I use myself as a model, but the person that I commissioned this for wanted something loose and vibrant and fun, and I love painting this way. So it's been a fun little exploration and this little commission of someone's uh, <laughs> backside that they also wanted me to do. So a lot of the commissions I'm getting are of work that is similar to what my interests are, but it always feels a little bit different when you're not painting for yourself, but there you go. That would be my little snapshot of what I've been doing since the program and just showing work and really exploring people outside myself. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll let Claire take it away. Great. Well, thanks, Aaron. And we we Bye. will we do have some time set aside at the end for lots of questions and dialogue. Um, like I said, people can jump in, but um, we do we we did structure it that way, so we are expecting to have a um, a conversation still. So yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. It was great to see your presentation. And thank you so much, uh, Michael and um, Ellen Mueller, uh, for having me on the program. I'm really grateful to share my practice with everyone. And I'll go ahead and get my screen shared here. So I think, okay. So my name is Clarissa Odin, and you can call me Claire during this time period because uh, that's what I usually go by. I'm a figurative painter and I've always been really drawn to the anatomy um, of the figure as well as the face. And in particular, I've really uh, focused my work on the female figure. And I think it originates from my identity as a woman and particularly a very petite and feminine woman who has experienced being overlooked in my intellect and my strengths and abilities. And I wanted to contribute my voice to the visual representation of women, which I see to be changing and becoming much more inclusive and diverse and multifaceted, which really excites me. Um, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. Uh, so here's my first image for 
all of you. And this is a painting that I created at the beginning of my time in the MFA program at MCAD. And it was my first nude painting of myself, which was a really big step for me. It felt very vulnerable, um, but at the same time, very empowering. And at this time, I was doing a lot of research and thinking about uh, art historical representations of women. And so part of my drive to create these portraits was in looking back at the art historical representations of women that were not, uh, did not contain much agency for these women um, in the images. Um, so women that were appearing passive or submissive and they're purely for uh, visual pleasure of the viewer. And so I wanted to create something that, um, where I could show myself as an assertive person with agency. And I wanted to also show kind of an internal reflection of myself in this conversation, um, in this three way kind of um, mirror effect where I, um, I guess I'm seeing two uh, visual representations of myself. And I was also thinking about myself as being in this active pose, which usually I find um, male figures to be depicted in very active positions. And so I wanted to kind of turn the tables and change that in this painting. And in both reflections, I actually on the right side am kind of viewing that as my kind of masculine traits that maybe I carry within me. And then on the left side, thinking of that as my feminine traits that I have um, that are all part of me. And so I'm gonna jump ahead to actually my thesis work that I did in the program because I see this as a culmination of the ideas that I explored during my time in the program. And I also see it as a connection to where I want to go next with my work. And in these two paintings, I was thinking a lot about my personal relationship with femininity and the concept of it. And I, I wanted to show that I have some dual impulses towards femininity. Um, for those who do know me here, you know that I absolutely love to dress up. I love feeling feminine. Um, but I also wanted to show that I am not, um, I'm resistant towards the patriarchal implications that I feel like end up getting tied to femininity. And so in both of these paintings, they worked as a diptych together. And on the right side was kind of my allure and um, my draw to embracing femininity um, as I kind of look down into this pool of femininity around me. And on the left side was kind of feeling a little bit more resistant and maybe frustrated with um, also the way that femininity and products in Western culture are pushed upon women. Um, and so in both of these paintings, I include two kind of different paint applications. Um, there's underpainting and overpainting, and in this slide, I wanted to show you a little bit of what I meant by that. The underpainting is monochromatic, and so you can see I actually start all my paintings this way, and it's all just based in creating the form and having the light and dark values sculpted out for me. And, and then on top of that, I paint the overpainting, and in this case, for these two paintings I created, I wanted the objects, which symbolize femininity, to be painted just as the underpainting, so left in the underpainting. And I wanted the figures to be painted in the overpainting. Um, and it was because I wanted the figures to have more dimension to them and more realness to them than the objects and kind of seeing the objects as something that's really enticing and alluring, but at the same time does not represent the same realness as the figures in the paintings. And here's another detail of my self-portrait with nylons, just to see some of the overpainting on the figure. And I work with reflections a lot, um, which you can see that there's 
a definite difference between um, how these figures are responding to their reflections as well, which kind of uh, it supports the idea that I was thinking about in the resistance versus the embrace as well of femininity. And here's another painting. I'm backtracking a little bit uh, in my work that I created during my MFA program. And in this case, I was using underpainting and overpainting, but it was to express a bit of a different idea. I was thinking about objectification at the time and kind of a critique of it. And so I split up the figure um, by using underpainting in her bottom region and then overpainting in the torso. And, and then I was kind of thinking about um, domesticity as well and thinking of it in a similar way to femininity in which uh, sometimes it's an expectation put upon women, but it should be their option to embrace it. And I created this painting in the same series, which has the pillow kind of representing the domestic atmosphere and, um, and it's kind of weighing a little bit upon her, but she still feels uh, rather active. And that was important to me in my paintings to still make the figure active in their poses or in their expression. And here's another painting in which she kind of feels like she's um, kind of bound to the tile on the wall and kind of thinking of her self as, you know, maybe she's a little bit more trapped in, in this box of expectations and uh, what, what society expects her to be. And this is actually, a collage that represents the new painting that I've started. And this is part of my process. I figured I would share since I'm, it is a work in progress. I am doing photo collages now as a way to sketch my ideas out. And this one's about strength and endurance. And I, I think that the MCAD program really allowed me to thoroughly explore ideas and I'm, I'm feeling like I'm more attached in a way to my thesis ideas than I am to my older ideas. And so now I'm growing out of that and wanting to create some very strong and empowering images of myself. And here is a comparison between uh, this current composition and a past composition that I created. And um, I think that the idea of repetition and multiple figuration does bring more power to the subject of the piece because they're in motion and they're consuming more space in that way and more of the composition and uh, but both of these I, I see my new one as maybe kind of more of a response to the older painting every which way uh, in which she's being kind of compressed into the lower region of the canvas versus this one I see as her pushing up and and her gaze is even going outside the canvas in the upper region of the composition and this is also just a little bit of my process it's um, a diagram of my current work in progress and thinking about how to translate it to my canvas it's something that I do for myself in order to make sure that I can fit everything that I want to fit because I tend to paint larger than um, than what I'm seeing and it's just a tendency to keep growing so I I give myself some parameters while I'm putting the painting on the composition and this is my underpainting process and this is my current painting again it's in a state where it's kind of in between so I figured I'd show you this part of it right now and I have the beginning of the underpainting which starts with just putting down some paint and then I'm slowly carving out the lights and darks as I go and I do it subtractively and additively at the same time with paints and with q-tips and my goal just to finish up with my personal work here 
in this current painting is that I want to use underpainting and overpainting to express the idea with these figures uh, of endurance and strength. And I want to make the lowest uh, part of the painting, the, the figure at the bottom in underpainting. And then as she rises, I want to add more and more layers to her until in the uh, furthest up figure, the figure that's looking up towards the sky, that figure will be in full overpainting. And that's my plan for the, that particular piece that I'm working on right now. I do have uh, some commission work that I wanted to share as well. And that's kind of entering a, a different uh, chapter of what I've been doing since graduate school. So, um, Aaron, did you want to did you want to do any questions back and forth about our during this time, or would you like me to go ahead with my uh, commission? What do you think? Is that, sorry. I think my microphone's on right now, and okay, I'll go ahead and show a little bit of the commissions, and then we'll we have some questions as well that we were going to interview with next. This is a commission that I've been working on, and it's a group portrait of some children in a family and it's a little bit different than the work that I do personally. So I, I definitely feel that I, I'm grouping these separately right now for that reason. But the commission has been an interesting experience and a way for me to learn more about painting in general and improve in painting, I feel, and try new things. And it is a, a different composition than I would usually do because I'm used to working with very large figures and these ones are very small. But I'm also very excited by the idea and have been working with landscape in this painting for the first time in a, a while that I've been painting. And so that definitely excites me to be branching out a little bit from what I usually do. And I try to bring my my sense of detail and texture and color that I that I enjoy exploring and working with into my commissions as well. And um, Claire, I have a question. With your commissions, how are you taking your commissions? Are you advertising online on your website? Are you doing Instagram? Like what is the primary way that you're kind of exploring your com commissions? Thank you. I'm actually I've been taking commissions by personal, um, I guess, personal conversations and uh, word of mouth a little bit right now. And hopefully I can build a base and advertise a little more online and get commissions that way in the future is what I'm thinking. It's, it's starting out right now with who I know and, and who wants what kind of at this time. And and this is a commission that I did with my sister, Isabella Odin, actually, for the Maplewood Mall. And so you can see it's really different. It's a, an interactive educational animal display. So that's kind of, um, it's kind of a fun thing to explore, though. I've, I've enjoyed working and creating uh, pictures of the animals. And here's a close-up of a capybara, which I had never heard about as an animal before, but I learned about. And and then here's also, um, we we definitely took uh, inspiration from the animals in real life as well as in photographs. And, and then here's a couple more detail shots. We created six panels all together that were eight foot by four foot. And and that's, that's the end of what I have to show for my commission work. I, and I've actually, I feel like it's been a, a great chance to, to paint and to still apply 
maybe my aesthetics uh, to, to an idea that's not entirely my own. It's collaborative, but it's been enjoyable to learn about working that way in addition to creating my personal work. And I wanted to actually ask Erin a couple of questions too about mm -hmm. her commissions and yeah. her actually take my screen down from here. Let me see here. There we go. And I wanted to ask Erin, um, how has your painting and your sketching and your planning process in general changed since you started working with other models, either in your commissions or in your personal work, um, as opposed to working with only yourself before? Yeah, um, I think my primary goal in general is to always have um, an intersectional feminist lens with whatever I'm doing. Um, so I think the challenge in working with other people, which has been something I've been really excited about the past year, has been really like taking in the person I'm working with. Um, even with commissions, I'm always asking a lot of questions. Recently, I've been doing a lot of that via Instagram or my website um, in these times, trying to be self-employed, like all, a lot of us are. And a lot of those discussions are about what is the image that you'd like to be painted and why is that something that you would like to make um, or would like to have in your home and kind of having these questions and always discussions about kind of why to a certain extent and um, yeah, working through that. And I think what's been really different in general is just yeah, exploring with different people. Painting yourself is a very insular and uh, kind of meditative thing. And the moment you start painting other people, I think you, it becomes much more of a collaboration. Even if you're the only artist working on it, um, the, the conversation is a co collaboration and the end product is a, is a byproduct of two people or a group of people kind of having a discussion to create something that everybody is um, on board with and is excited about. I think that's the biggest change, um, especially with commissions. It's a huge collaboration, but even with the my personal work with using models, it's a very much working with the model, understanding what they need, what they want, and the kind of poses they're excited about, and really letting them lead um, those photography shoots that I'm using to document them and then working it into a final piece later. So, yeah. It's, it's interesting, um, Aaron. One of the things that I noticed when you were showing your work, and I, I'm just jumping in now because you're talking yeah. about it, but the work that you, when you shifted to including other figures in your work, and mm -hmm. I noticed that this painting style changed a little bit um, from the work that you'd done in the program, and it's it's a bit more kind of rendered and yeah. a bit less kind of... Um, Rushy and gestural. Is there was there a was there something else that happened um, with that shift that kind of influenced that? I think it was a natural growth, or the way I was working. I was just trying to, I think, represent people the best I could. And I think a lot of that had to do with me just wanting to respect the body in front of me that I was displaying. I think that translated itself into a much more tight rendering, which I I enjoy doing that i enjoy getting in there and um playing around with those minute details i think when i'm painting myself i can have those moments of that but i'm able to let go in simpler ways or it's easier for me to step back because it's i know my body and i'm very comfortable with adding and adjusting colors differently so i think there's something to be said about eventually um as i'm going forward here kind of blending those two things for myself and figuring out what what I want to take with me as far as that looseness, but also really trying to keep the respect and the adoration I have for these other people that are excited to be part of the project and these paintings. So I think that's where it comes from, Michael. But it definitely happened without me knowing it was happening. And then it I got a few paintings in and realized that was what was happening. So that's a great question. Thanks. <laughs> um, Clarissa. We had talked about a few things. Um, for your work, you've primarily focused on your own body and self-portraiture. 
what does it mean for you to use your own body in the work and would you ever want to expand out of that or is the self portraiture really vital to your feminist message and keeping it about you specifically yeah i think that my work creating self portraits does feel like a very honest way to express myself and very literally enter the work for me and um as as and part of my identity i've always been a performer as well i love singing and dancing and so in that way i feel like i'm actually creating a performance as well in putting myself into the work and enacting the dynamic poses and I, I like the fact that I can always feel connected to what I'm doing and like I'm actually creating these poses myself and and since a lot of my work comes from personal experience or thinking about ideas that are really significant to me I, I feel like it translates very well into the work that way mm -hmm. But I have also been interested in working with other models as well and would like to do so in the future. I, I think it would be a little bit of a different direction because I'd be adapting to thinking a little bit about them and more about them and their experiences, like you said, and and so and then kind of empathetically entering into that myself when I'm collaborating with them. And it does sound like something that is very exciting that I would actually very much like to do, especially, you know, figuring out um, maybe either during quarantine or after we're past it and I'm able to interact with people more fully. Definitely. And I think what's been so interesting now is because I've been working with other people's bodies and painting other people for about a year. That's been my general focus. Um, but after all this has happened now, besides commission work that's it feels really separate to me but as far as personal work i feel this innate drive to make stuff about myself right now right. i think we're all with ourselves much more than we have been in a very long time depending on what our living situations are or what our um economic situations are but i know for me i'm home all the time right now and i'm, I'm with myself and in my personal spaces more than i've ever been and i've never been someone that's enjoyed really painting um spaces that much i really always focus on figure and i think what's interesting i've just am feeling this need to start documenting myself in my space much more than i ever have and i'm kind of taking photographs i don't know of course claire if you've been doing this but like taking photographs or thinking about ideas of how you can how i can represent what's going on and how i'm feeling in this like smaller space and putting that on a canvas and i think I didn't realize I really wanted to go back to my my own figure and really highlight that again and really like focus inward again. But I think in these times, that's what felt, has felt really honest and really um, motivating. Um, besides the commissions and stuff I'm working on as well, but for personal work, I really don't see myself painting other people for a, a while. I kind of want to focus in. I don't know if you're feeling similar things, Clarissa. Yeah, it feels like a good time to get in touch with yourself again, too, I think, during this time period. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so uh, what what knowledge do you think you have gained from doing these commissions? Have you, I wanted to ask you, too, has there been any um, from kind of outside your usual network and your commissions any that you've gotten from through your website or through your instagram as well yeah almost majority of the things i've been working on for other people right now have been exterior sources um i've I, it really took a pandemic for me to really start a small business so now <laughs> this is what's happening now and i think a lot of artists are listening to this and here right now um it's it's an interesting time because what what do i have at home I have paint and I can start creating something and trying to sell something. And a lot of people don't have money to spend, but for those that do, I've been able to create a small little audience of either people buying work I've already made or people that are interested in commissions, which has been a smaller part. I feel like I've been selling more of just things I've, I've just had rolled up in my myriad of like storage spaces in my apartment <laughs> that like hold all my pieces. Um, 
but yeah, Instagram and my website and mostly Instagram as far as like advertisement. And so any artists that are here right now, um, as much as social media can be really hard and not always productive, um, using it as a professional platform, I found really productive and I found a lot of success in that. Um, and when I say a lot of success, you know, moderately, it's been nice to have always something to be working on. Uh, but also it's really nice to just keep your name out there and makes me want to keep making work to make sure I'm posting it places and trying to create a bit of a following as far as interest in either coming to shows or buying a piece or trying to share it out to their own followers. That's been kind of what I'm navigating right now. And again, it really took this happening for me to really dive into that more than I ever have. Because I can't focus on teaching the way I used to be able to be doing. Yeah, great question. Um, for you, when you're composing your paintings, it seems like you're using a lot of Photoshop um, and other tools. Do you use a lot of technolo technology in general, or was that mostly added in during the MFA program? Do you really like using technology in your work? Um, you use it more than I do. I tend to just like take a photo and go from there. I don't do as much pre-planning. So I'm wondering what you enjoy about that process or how it makes your process easier and more difficult. Yeah, I think that technology is really helpful in creating my compositions. And I, I really enjoy working with, um, you know, how can I make the figure really expressive and tell a story? And I think of them as little scenes in a way. And so the the structuring of the composition becomes really important. And, and so I've been recently, actually it started with my thesis work, which they're, they're actually behind me right now, my two large scale paintings. And working that large, I knew that I would have to do a lot of planning beforehand. And that's, that's how I started using Photoshop as almost a way of sketching and producing some different kinds of compositions a little bit faster at a faster rate. And so I feel like it really allows me to fully explore my options. And so it's kind of a preliminary tool that I use. And from there, I usually use a lot of photographs just printed out and kind of stuck onto the canvas so that I can see it while I'm working. And on my computer, I always am zooming in as well on it photographs just to see everything. And I, and I get really involved in the texture of the skin and other things. So I'm zooming in as far as I can really when I'm working with it. Yeah, that's really, it's just really interesting because we both work in the, with the figure, but we have such different ways of approaching it. And um, um, even my underpaintings, you, you work in oil paints, correct? Yeah, and I work with acrylics. So I think that in itself works really differently. Um, and, I worked with acrylics for a very long time because I'm an impatient person. So I like to get it done really fast. Um, but that's formed a lot of how my process happens, I think. Um, uh, you're I able to do that more. Too, what's your process in terms of, you know, planning your composition and getting your figures on the canvas? It mm -hmm. seems like the scale and the, the way that the figure fills the space is super important to you. And, and I'm just wondering about also how much is live observation versus photo um when you're working with yourself i'd imagine um you might have more freedom with live observation definitely great question um well i do i do do underpaintings similar to how you work but i don't have them as fully fleshed out um and i don't have a great photo of that for right now but that's okay um mostly i'm just kind of getting the outline and the dimensions of the piece so right now i have these really small canvases Ooh, um you actually can see this one um really small canvases that i'm going to be working on for some personal work and right now they're gessoed and they're nailed into my wall that's how i like to work flat against a wall but when i do the underpainting it's going to be with some neutral tone like a brown or a yellow ochre, similar to what you would do. But instead of getting all the textures, I kind of just focus on base dimensions. And the moment I'm getting in real shadow, I'm directly painting and 
mixing on my palette and going right in there. So it's just a slightly different, I have a more immediate process, I think, and that's partially just because of the material itself. Because with acrylic, everything you paint, you'll have to paint over it again anyway, because it dries so fast. So I kind of work section by section across the body. When I'm painting someone, I'm painting maybe just their arms or just their hands or just their face and kind of having it broken down by day or by whatever my session is for that day of what I'm gonna be accomplishing and kind of actually fully rendering different parts at a time, which works for me, which I know is sometimes the incorrect way to go, but from all my painting teachers, but uh, it's worked really well for me with Recreate being able to work with acrylics and that allows me to paint really easily at home in a non super amazing ventilated space. Uh, but acrylics are easy to travel with. So here we are. <laughs> it worked out okay. <laughs> Um, and what was the second part you asked about? Um, oh, photographs versus. Oh yeah, um, I, I take photographs and do the same thing that you do, zooming in on my computer. I don't really print things out anymore. I tend to just do it that way, just because then I'm able to get finer detail as mm -hmm. needed. But I'll take photographs of um, all my subjects or of myself. I take the photographs as well and put my put my uh, camera on a tripod and do a self timer. And I'm just around my apartment or wherever I need to take the photographs, kind of making weird movements. And I'm sure it would be hilarious to film whatever's happening <laughs> <laughs> to get, the, to get the, the weird fleshy pushes and movements and the twists that I like to have. I go through a lot of not great compositions into something I finally think looks interesting. Um, I guess they're all interesting in some way, but not all for painting. <laughs> so that's, it's, a, it's an interesting, many bad photos to like one good one <laughs> when yeah. I'm picking them up myself. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of curious, just hearing you both talk about your processes and um, you both end up with these really luscious and very finished works. And, and you also both definitely have content in your work and you know it's um, social content I'm just curious if you feel like you know your experience is exhibiting your work out there what kind of conversations you have with people because on the one hand and I think this is just something that that maybe plagues realist painters especially in general is that you know you make these paintings and inevitably the comment is wow that's so good it looks so real or, you know, something of that nature rather than really addressing, the, you know, the content that you're working with. So I'm just kind of curious, like, how you, I guess, what your experiences have been with that and, and how you navigate that in terms of um, responses to the work. Yeah, I can take that right away and then let you go, Claire. But um, I think overall, it's been a really positive experience, but... Um, you either have, you might have people that that's all that can be said is that they think it looks real. So that's something I always navigate with people coming across my art for the first time, trying to have like a deeper discussion past the base representation, which I enjoy doing that representation. That's why I'm sure Claire and I both paint this way. It's a fun exercise in that. Um, it's a challenge, but there's more beyond technique and there's a lot of thought that goes into what gets painted, right? So that's like something I've had um, definite real conversations with in a gallery with somebody that's kind of stopping there. I try to bridge the gap there a little bit. Um, but I've also had conversations that maybe have been negative about especially painting a lot of nude women. I print, like I really only paint nude people. <laughs> um, and so that's been an interesting conversation too um, with different, and, depending on how people are coming to the pieces, what their gaze is and what their experience is. Either they're sometimes very uncomfortable, sometimes they find them almost pornographic or sexual. So that's a very interesting conversation to navigate as well. Um, and I would just come back to it as talking about personal power and, um, and really allowing a body to just exist and what we bring to it and how people view it is from their perception. And so what the pain's giving to you isn't, as aggressive as sometimes what people are bringing to it is <laughs> so I've noticed too, um, especially with um, I mean, larger bodies and fat bodies is a lot of what I 
pain of myself. And a lot of those bodies are fetishized and there's a lot of layers to things sometimes, but um, it's overall been a really positive thing and a lot of discussion around how those things interact. So yeah, and Claire. Yeah, I think that I've had similar experiences where people have seen my paintings and I would say just depending on who they are and what perspective they're coming from, some of them may agree or disagree with the content of them, mm -hmm. you know, itself. And so that, and I think it's good to have those conversations, if, even if uh, there are divergent viewpoints, because I'm hoping that my art can maybe give them a chance to enter my viewpoint and see things a little bit differently. And so I, I definitely have had those experiences with people looking at my art or uh, sometimes, um, you know, maybe with the fact that it's me in the paintings, I've, I've had people think, oh, you know, what, why are you painting yourself like all frustrated with all these products around you when you use them yourself? And, um, you know, and I'm just trying to show that that is also a, a part of me as well, is that I can sometimes feel that way. And uh, so the, the, yeah, my thesis was about those dual impulses and, so I, I think that that can also be an interesting part of the conversation, you know, what, when people do realize that it is you in the paintings and, and they kind of can see that pretty fast. And so I, I feel like that definitely just opens up a, a lot of different feedback, you know, depending on how well they know you or don't know you. And, um, and, and then sometimes if the, if you're new, the, could be uncomfortable for them too. I've definitely had that happen as well. Uh, but I think that painting in the way that I do is is really important to me. That I that I really express my my full potential in uh, my technical work because I feel like it maybe it's just um, it 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 kind of drives the the message of the painting home more than if I were not to push all the way with what I can technically do with these figures. And so I feel like that's the handling of the paint itself is also a way to express the, the idea or to tell the story of the painting. Yeah. Great, we've got a question, question here um, from Great. Rowan. Um, Claire and Aaron, who are your um, some of your strongest artistic influences? Um, for me, one that's been brought up a lot, but one I love deeply is Jenny Seville. If any of you know who she is, um, she really made me feel like I could paint large bodies and in a way that I mean I paint very differently than she does. But uh, she's a British artist, and I think the way she paints bodies and flesh and really lets her paint say so much and the material say so much about the figure really made a giant impact on me um her and joan semmel is um a wonderful artist that i quote not quote um i took a lot of inspiration for um, my thesis and heavily <laughs> referenced her but she is a woman that comes from second wave feminism and she has continually documented her body over through her aging process and has worked in so many different ways and she um, just has a way of painting her body from her own perspective that I find really beautiful and um, yeah just these women that love sharing bodies and their body and are excited about um, honesty in that way that's what really gets, excites me yeah i love both of those artists as well and um another one that i would add is Aaliyah chapin or chapin I'm, I'm not clear about the last name but she paints flesh incredibly just there's oh it's so beautiful the way that she does it she she has so many you know colors and such a wide spectrum of texture and color inside of, you know, just one area of the body, you know, and she, she paints these full figures and these women that, that do feel like they're in their 
very natural state, which I really appreciate about her work too. And and it's not, uh, you know, it, they're not figures that are traditionally focused on in painting. She paints a lot of women that are older in age. And I think it's really beautiful that she shows that in her work and embraces that as her subject. And so I, I really just admire both aesthetically and um, in her subject matter, what she chooses to paint. And, and then also another painter that it's not, she, I kind of found out about her during my thesis process, um, Audrey Flack, and she does a lot of still life paintings. And during the time period that photorealism was really at large, she was painting a lot of very feminine subjects as opposed to her male counterparts and was one of the only um, female photorealists during that time. And I really, really love her work and, and just the textures and um, just lusciousness of everything in there that she, that the application she can achieve with her paints. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting that, uh, I mean, it makes sense that, of course, things that we love are things that are women, female artists that are painting about the female experience in a lot through aging or bodies or whatever that is. So, yeah, those are great picks. Got another question here um, from Alondra. Uh, do you know any local galleries and people you would recommend talking to, I'm assuming, about figurative painting? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting, and maybe I'm going to just jump in on this question, too, yeah. because uh, it's related to another one, which is, you know, we think about contemporary art, and especially at this moment, um, interdisciplinary approaches are very much championed, you know, out there, and um, that's great. Um, but I would say sometimes as a painter, it can make you feel, you know, a little bit like maybe you're um, on, on, the, on the outskirts a bit. Um, so... That kind of relates to, to Alondra's question, but you know, where where maybe where you're finding community in terms of yeah. Because I because that is so true. I think as painters, I, I feel not like sidelined because we are such a large part of like the art community, but um it's not the new hot thing right now to paint because it's been around for hundreds and thousands and of years. But um I really love uh there's a lot of great galleries too back, I think, especially during all this that has been going on has always championed so many of the MCAT MFA alums, but also just has such an interdisciplinary approach to how they look at the artists that are displayed there. I've seen all types of work there. So I always love checking out SUVAC and seeing what's happening there. Um, I think there's also thinking about another gallery, but Right now, on top of my head, uh, a podcast I listen to a lot of is State of the Arts Pod. I don't know if anybody called Soda, um, but a local creator and gallerist, uh, Sarah Kuesler and her friend Jasa, um, really take conversations of local artists and all types of artists. And I know they've had many conversations with painters and um, figurative painters. Um, I've been on a panel on that podcast as well, but um, they really have a great approach of local spots and they talk to curators, galleries. So if nothing else, they have them as an organization have a lot of things that you can check out that are smaller creators that you might have an easier time kind of checking in with some of those galleries and uh, curators. But. Yeah. I've heard about um, Second Shift Studio too. Oh, yeah. Gallery that you can um work as have a you know i'm not sure at the moment with things the way they are what it's like but um getting a space to work and also um displaying your work there and i they have applications that they open up um and it it seems like a a great place for artists mm -hmm. that are beginning career to look and Absolutely. i think Myself, I'm also kind of interested in figuring in learning about more galleries around the area. And I know galleries that I greatly admire, but I think that um, as a starting artist, just thinking about um, what are some of the ones that are that are supportive of beginning career artists who maybe haven't shown at as many venues before. 
is something I would be interested in too. Definitely. And I'll plug in um, one of the, I'm on the board, I'm the vice president of a gallery in Albert Lee, Minnesota. So it's not quite in the Twin Cities area, right? It's a, it's about an hour and a half away. Um, a bunch of friends I've known for many years um, got me on the board there and now here we are. And we aren't open to the public right now, but it's called Freeborn County Arts Initiative um, down in Albert Lee, Minnesota. And we're always looking at um, solo exhibition stuff. I didn't become a part of the board until after I had a show there and I just really loved the small town um, kind of <laughs> uh, gallery there. Uh, there's not an art space really besides that small gallery in Albert Lee. And so if you're looking at ways to get outside of the Twin Cities, Albert Lee, Hudson, Wisconsin, there's a lot of smaller gallery, galleries that would probably love to get more applications or to hear an interest from a Twin Cities artist that would love to expand beyond their normal scope and try out other places. Cause there's more than just in our little bubble here in the Twin Cities. There's a lot of little galleries that are trying to make it into something and try to create a really vital arts community in their smaller spaces. So that's another thing to check out. I'm glad you mentioned the second shift studio cause that's, that's a newer um, program and I think if I understand it right, they, their fellows are all women or individuals who identify uh, as yeah. women. So, um, and one of our recent alums is uh, one of the fellows now, Heather Lomano, is there right yeah. now. So, yeah. Are there, are there other questions? We're, we're about at time here, so I want to respect everybody's time. Um, but if there's any other, um, you know, questions that anyone's dying to ask, you know, we can get those. I have a question yeah, and then a comment. So I, I'll guess I'll start with the, with the comment for Claire. Um, I was fortunate enough to see your thesis work in person. Um, and it's just stunning to see your practice and your dedication to the, the medium. And one thing that I really enjoyed hearing in your presentation was the idea of underpainting and overpainting and I think that is something that I overlooked until now where I'm like oh yeah I see it now like I see the connection the technical and the conceptual concern uh, so just a comment to that um, and then Erin a uh, question for you and this could just be more the format that you presented but the initial photo I saw that you only had three large images in the MFA that were unstretched. And then I wondered if the unstretched um, canvas is meant to be part of your work um, conceptually. Uh, yeah, so it is. You could talk a little bit about. Yeah, I, never, I didn't hit on that. Um, but the unstretched was always, a, it was a consideration about kind of flesh and how the canvas can feel like a skin and feel like almost like a tapestry. And another layer onto that, um, because I mean, Claire and I both paint so much more realistically and traditionally, I like the idea of taking it off the stretcher and making it feel a little bit less precious because bodies are just existing. And I like the idea of it just kind of existing in a space and kind of moving with a little bit of wind when you walk by it, that it moves slightly like a tapestry. I really liked that quality um, in the work. And I've just kind of, and I then I don't have to stretch canvases. <laughs> so I really like um, kind of, still playing with that and not keeping um, everything so pristine on the edges and allowing a little bit more movement. Um, it really adds another level to me for the piece. Yeah, thanks, great question. Well, th well thank you. Thank you both for um, being here and presenting your work and having this conversation that we can kind of witness here. It's been fantastic having you. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. And, and I just want to say to everybody that, um, that we did record this, um, although actually I honestly forgot. And um, I think we were about a minute into your presentation, Aaron, when I remembered. So uh, we have a recording of it from there. And um, that will be posted on the MCAT MFA um, YouTube channel. So, um, you know, it takes a day or two. But, but that will end up there. And also that um, anything that 
um, appeared in the chat box here. Um, I, I end up getting a, a, a copy of that. So um, if you missed something and happen to want it, just email me. Um, and I'll put my email in here, but you can just look me up at MCAT if you don't have a way to capture this right now. Um, and I'm happy to share that with you. So just so you know. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, everybody. It was great to see see you and appreciate you coming. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. It was really fun talking to you, Claire. Yeah, it was great talking to you, too. And thank you, Michael, so much for inviting us. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, <laughs> we hope to see you all next week for the final ProPrac, which is, um, as I said, it's Thursday, um, next Thursday, but it is at 11 a.m. because Peng Wu, who will be interviewing um, the other participants, he's actually in China um, right now, so he's dealing with a time change. Um, so we decided to not do it at 4 o'clock in the morning his time, so it'll be at uh, 11 a.m. So. Hope you all can make it. Nice to see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.